Let's talk. So today I had a conversation with the guys from Buka. In fact, I was talking with Eves, uh, who's designing the Red Strike game. Pretty cool, very interesting. Can't wait to see that on the table. And I also had a chance to talk with Patrick, who is, I guess, the owner or founder uh, of uh, VUCA. And uh, interesting chap, young guy, 35-ish, I think he said. Started gaming college days and started out with OCS Case Blue. Yeah, so uh, that tells you something. So he likes detailed games, pretty cool. Uh, what I wanted to do here was and I, I need to make sure that I kind of get the the tone and the perspective correct because I'm enjoying the game, but I'm finding it frustrating. And I'm finding it frustrating because I roll like crap. So so let's just let's just talk a little bit about sort of the cadence of the game. I guess is what um, I'm trying to I'm trying to get to here that yeah, sort of invokes or evokes uh, the, the correct sort of feeling here. Now, when I look at it, you look at this game, it's a couple of kilometers per hex. I think we're doing 16 hour turns or 18, uh, sorry, sorry, eight to 16 hour turns, something like that. Uh, and we're dealing with battalion scale things. <coughs> so you gotta keep that at the forefront of your mind as you look at what's happening, why it's happening, and how it's impacting your gameplay. And here, here's why. I'm gonna move this very as carefully as I can, and then I'm gonna move the camera, and we'll have a chat about this. So, so if you look, uh, let's try not to get too, uh, we can scooch that up there. Let's just focus on the Germans for a minute because, you know, they're on the offense here. So it, it, the activity level matters to them. So these guys started out, I think they got, they started with set, start with seven. So they've spent one, two, three, four, five, they've spent five activations. And uh, the progress has basically been pushing a few units up and getting guys in position to attack and being uh, basically blocked from executing on those attacks because they've had to burn a, a lot of these uh, activations, right? And he, here's what's going on. So I start out with a seven and I roll, let's say they roll, it's a D10. Let's say they roll a five, right? Let's just five. So uh, then we get five activations. So you, you go like, ooh, hoo, hoo, okay, I can move five stacks. I can conduct a prepared attack for three points. I can move an HQ for one, do a refit for one, whatever, blah, 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 right? Well, then next act of, next activation, I, I'm looking, I'm now down on the sixth column and I, I have a five uh, again, cool. Five again, cool. But now when I get down to four here, now I get four activations. All right, so now I can move a couple of units and do a regular attack. Well, that's a significant impact when a regular attack which is not on this section of the chart, it's on the other side, and I want to keep my finger here for the minute. Regular attack is not going to give you all the benefits of a prepared attack. So now I have to start making compromises about moving units, units adjacent, uh, exploit movement type of activities. Uh, do I want to use, uh, do, I, do I want to move multiple units or a unit twice? because that's entirely possible. I can attack multiple times with the same unit. And this is where the fluidity and the flexibility of the, of the activation system gives you the ability to take a, a small core of units and really just get after it and push, 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 push. And I think, I think the first problem that I have, whoa, we nearly knocked it over. Uh, the first problem I have had is I've been trying to keep these formations together but I have such a large, where is he? Where's the HQ is here, I think. I've got a, I've got a 15 hex range for, for command range. So screw that. I need to, I need to get killer stacks, kill things, move through, move up, move through and carry on. And then, then, you know, then bring these rear guard guys up. Now I haven't even, even been able to get these rear guard guys 
literally into the fight yet. So we're fighting with one hand tied behind our back because instead of rolling a four, I'm rolling a one. And I'm getting one activation or two activations or three activations or, you, you know, and so, <laughs> so it, it's, so this is the thing that I really dig about this system. And I can see this being applied in many different uh, battles and modes. Why is my camera not doing what I want? All right. Uh, the thing that I dig about this is that that variability going from one activation to seven or from, well, it's so interesting. Um, if you roll like, here, look at this. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, hang on a sec, just bear with me for one second while I zoom in here, because this is, this is interesting. Shit. I've got a very heavy phone uh, sitting on a very small stand, so you have to bear with me. If I have one available activation, and I roll a one, I get one activation. If I roll a 10, I get seven. The variability is coming in in the middle because look, at the other end, oh, okay, here's what it is. All right, never mind. Uh, <clears throat> the spread is the same, one to seven, but the number of ones and twos and threes and fours is significantly different, obviously. With the seven, I get four chances, a 40% chance of having seven activations, whereas here is that one chance, 10% chance of having seven activations and a 40% chance. Okay, so it's, it's purely uh, spread, it's, it's, it's spread evenly. evenly. I was, I was looking, <laughs> I'm looking for excuses for my bad play here. So, uh, yeah, so the old uh, 14th Panzer sucks a bag of you know what and is not getting it done for Team Germany here. Meanwhile, the Soviets are sitting back going, hey, I, whether I get one activation or three, I'm just going to put myself in improved positions. I don't see any rules saying I can't. Um, I'm very fixated on this side of the map for some reason. I, I feel like this is the game plan here and I'm sucking at it, so I'm doubling down hard. I have not cleared out or isolated any of this crap here. I have a similar situation over the right. We've done multiple attacks over here and we've chipped away, but nothing really substantial has happened. So my, look, look, the point of the, this video is that there's a level of frustration that I get with the die roll. Why is this camera freaking ready to tip? Hang on one sec, guys. Oh, sorry, guys and girls. Uh, <clears throat> the, le the number of activations that are going on in here the spread is, it's even, there's an even distribution here, but it is food barring game plan, right? And uh, that, that, that tied to this activation DRM, so, you know, initiative DRM, who gets the initiative for the turn? Right now, the Germans are on a plus four, so that they have a good chance, let's roll the dice. All right, there you go. So, you know, the Soviets roll an eight. These guys roll the six. They're gonna get a 10, so they're gonna get activation this turn. All right, we'll, we'll go do something with that. We flip that over and put it back down here. That's my understanding how that works. And then we're gonna roll for activation points for a formation, and I'm probably gonna activate the dudes on the south over here, just for east or west, where the freaking hell it is. South, probably. Um, just because I need to give this these guys uh, I, I, I gotta walk away from that for a moment, but um, we'll activate over here. I'm gonna roll a die. Well, well, let's, well let's do it. See, <laughs> of course, all my complaining, I roll a 10. And really, um, and this is not a VUCA problem, it's a universal problem. We can fit a one on this here, and we can make it a 10, people, instead of having to have a rule that says, a zero is a 10, seriously. Uh, so we've got a 10 for that guy, I'm gonna put that right there. So that's a 10 on the 
four column, it's going to give those guys seven activations. So I'm going to grab this thing, move it down to the seven, and we're going to go, we're going to get after it. So now I have more flexibility, more operational flexibility, more tactical flexibility, more, uh, it's, a, it's a reflection of the command and the cadence and the tempo of the battle. And it's really, really, really freaking cool. And it's very, very interesting, but for fucks, uh, for Dan's sake, I mean, it is so frustrating when you roll a one, a two, or a three, and you are trying to get this little set of guys into position so you can do one prepared attack against an element that is ready to pop. And you can't get the freaking dice to get the guys into spot, into location, to execute the attack which you then have to do a combat resolution on a D10 table as well. I can't believe I'm actually complaining about a 1D10 uh, a combat results table or, or activation results, right? Because there's too big a spread. Uh, <laughs> so, look, you may sense an element of frustration, but it's a joyous thing. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, it's a tension that is both invigorating and frustrating at the same time. And I can only imagine playing this opposed how freaking awesome it would be. All right. Across the Bug River, VUCA games, VUCA simulations. Later.